evening, we bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. We bring you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Maya Tintai in tonight's Game Plan. We'll check in with Adrian Wong as he begins a new chapter of his career with the Magnolia Hotshots. Then coach Willie Wilson returns to give us his very special Willie wish list on NBA trade prospects this coming trade deadline. And we'll catch up with the head coaches of our national beach volleyball teams as they prepare for the upcoming Southeast Asian Games. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Adrian Wong is officially a hot shot as he inks a two-year deal with Magnolia. The 6'3 Atenea standout makes his move from the rain or shine Elasta Painters, joining Magnolia stars Paul Lee, Calvin Abueba, and Ian Sangala. Tonight, Adrian Wong joins us live to share his excitement to find a new home with the Magnolia Hotshots from Bansang Manok. AD, welcome to the game. Hello, thanks for having me. All right, first of all, congratulations. Uh, big move, big career move for you for sure. Can you tell us a bit about your process, mo, how the process was like and finally ending up with Magnolia? Uh, well, my contract was ending this, this January, end of Jan. And I was just waiting for Ross to, to tell me whether or not they were going to extend me. And when the time came, uh, they told me that they weren't going to extend me. So I had to look elsewhere. And uh, me and my agent, we got together, we talked about some options and we felt like uh, going to Magnolia would be the best fit for me because uh, they have a, a good winning culture and they're final, finalists in last, uh, the last conference, so hopefully we could change the outcome this time. Yeah, and you know what, Eddie, you wanted to ask your transition inside the team, how did they welcome you? Um, everyone welcomed me, me with open arms. Uh, everyone there is super, super nice. And on the court, they might not be. Uh, <laughs> but uh, going, finally being a part of them, uh, uh, all they really want from me right now is pizza. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny because uh, you say that, uh, you know, they're not nice on the floor. I, I'd say the same with you. Uh, to be completely frank, uh, I don't think you're nice on the floor either. But when you look at this team and the way that they welcomed you, and uh, now that you got a chance to work out with them, was there something that surprised you that you kind of thought, uh, okay, outside looking in, they're like this. But then when you're actually close with them, or actually working with them, it, it's a whole different level, a whole different uh, expectation for you. Uh, uh, most definitely. Uh, everyone on the team goes super hard every single rep, and it's just going to make me better and also the whole team better and you know what ad i wanted to ask then who are you excited to play with you got stars alongside you oh yeah they're everywhere <laughs> uh, well probably most excited to play with paul lee mm -hmm. he's uh one of the league's most like premier scorers and just seeing him uh go to work go to practice do extra uh just motivates me to do more also yeah, you know, you mentioned Paul Lee, and when you talk about Paul Lee, obviously we know that he's a gunner. We know that his uh, will to, to play, to fight through anything, it's, uh, it's legendary already in, in Philippine basketball. And now that you're there, what was the first thing you said to him? What, was, what are you trying to get from this game that you're trying to apply to yours? Uh, what uh, really surprised me is uh, every single practice, he, he's, he's there uh, working working out uh, hours before the practice, getting shots up, getting his reps in. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, it just, it just his hard work really, um, it just uh, inspires me a lot. Yes, and you know what, AD, speaking of other stars, how about sila Ian, sila Calvin? How big of an impact are these veterans on your game? Oh, they're always teaching me uh, the, the ways of how, how to play, of our reads, and stuff right now is just uh, familiarizing myself with the team's offense and defense, and they've been there uh, every step of the way, helping me out, giving me tips here and there. And I'm super excited to play with them. AD, this is a very stacked team, and uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people are wondering what your role will be. Did Coach Tito tell you anything about what you could bring this team? Uh, he said uh, my defense and my shooting, uh, just just uh, play 100% uh, 
all the time and just work on team chemistry because I have to learn, like like you said, it was mid-season. I was with Ross and uh, out of nowhere, I became, I'm on Magnolia now. So it's just gelling together with my teammates, mm -hmm. uh, getting to know what uh, they like to do and stuff like that. Yo, Adrian, uh, before we let you go, uh, I just want one sentence from you with regards to some of your former friends who are coming into the league. Yeah. Uh, Big George, uh, Matt and Mike are coming in. Uh, what's your yeah. one piece of advice for them once they face you in particular? <laughs> Uh, be ready. <laughs> be ready. <laughs> AD, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate you being here again. Congratulations on the contract, me. and uh, we can't wait to see you on the floor again soon. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, Coach Willie Wilson returns to give us his very special Willie wish list on NBA trade prospects this coming trade deadline. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. Welcome back to the game. We are officially nearing the NBA trade deadline and we cannot get more hyped with the changes happening across the league. We've already seen moves like Karis Leverett being traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Kings trading Tyrese Halliburton to the Pacers and for Dumantis Sabonis and CJ McCollum to the New Orleans Pelicans. What else should we watch out for when it comes to our favorite teams? Four-time UAAP champion Willie Wilson helps us out tonight with some trade prospects in his very special Willie wish list. Willie, thank you very much for joining <laughs> us. And can I just say, Ai, we have I have to point out that he came very prepared with yes. notes handwritten, scanned by his <laughs> wife, printed and scanned by his wife here. And it, I'm excited. I'm excited for his takes, Ai. You know what? Our audience is really going to get excited with all of his thoughts yes. here on the trade deadlines. I think it's tomorrow, right? Yeah, so the trade deadline's coming up. And uh, Coach, I'm sure you were also looking at your phone and then saying, like, what's happening to the Kings? <laughs> oh, and, yeah. Uh, the oh, they definitely. did. But let's get going with what we got for you here. Yes, I first and foremost, we have Joel Embiid, who led the Philadelphia 76ers to be one of the top dogs in the East. However, as you can see, the relationship with Ben Simmons isn't really working out. Who should they look for in this trade deadline? Ah, our coach. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a beard? <laughs> no, no. All right. Um, um, I'm looking at I'm looking at Dewante Murray. 
Ah, DeJounte Murray. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, DeJounte Murray. We want somebody that's going to bring the same defense, or not the same defense, but that same level of defense that Ben Simmons gave. Now, keep in mind, DeJounte Murray was once a all-defensive first team. He puts up better stats than year, this year than Ben Simmons did last year, okay? So keep in mind, he's a triple-double threat going for around 20 points, 9 not 9 and 9 with another two steals. All right, obviously the money doesn't work. Yeah. So for to make the money work, who doesn't want shooters, right? Who doesn't mm -hmm. want shooters? So, I mean, um, you're going to have to throw in some shooters, say McDermott, ah, Keldon Johnson. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. and then at the same time, you get rid of Ben Simmons. Okay, Ben Simmons, no shooting. DeJounte Murray, anybody's an upgrade shooting-wise over Ben Simmons. So I think it's a win-win for both teams. Well, Coach, you know, that's going to be tough considering the fact that right now a lot of people are still wondering how big is that trade stock of a Ben Simmons because of what he's shown? Not just, uh, you know, the fact that he hasn't played and the fact that not a lot of people think that, he, you know, he didn't do well in the last playoffs for that last few possessions in that last series that they had on about Ben Simmons. But uh, I digress. I think that it is a good strategy of what they're looking for. DeJounte Murray mm -hmm. is going to be... I think more achievable than, let's say, Harden, maybe. Right, for oh, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, Ai, what do we have up next? Secondly, let's talk about the Brooklyn Nets. And okay. you know that they've gone through a slump with nine straight losses. And, of course, with the absences of KD, James Harden, and, of course, Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. So, who do you think should um, be picked to strengthen the roster next time? All right, all right, all right. Now, Ooh. keep in mind, this is my wish list. Yeah, right? yeah, this yeah. My wish list. That doesn't mean it'll happen. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't mean it'll happen, but it's my wish list. The, net, the Nets need a home court point guard. Okay. Okay, since Kyrie only plays half the time. Yeah. So I'm looking at Steve Nash. No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> let's look at Goran Dragic, all right? Goran okay. Dragic is in Toronto, doesn't want to be there. He's been frequently spotted at Heat home games, all right? He's, he, well, they're talking about him being a buyout candidate, but let's say, for instance, he's not. Mm -hmm. Just send over to Toronto, um, let's say Joe Harris, Let's say um, Paul Millsap, mm -hmm. you know, the Raptors need front court help. Everybody needs shooters. It's a win-win. Goran is 35. He doesn't have to play half the time. The other, the other half, he's coming off the bench. And at the same time, you got Patty Mills, who is perennially a better off the bench player. All right? Yeah. His three-point percentage as a, as, as a bench player is around 50%. When he starts, it drops 10, 10 points. He's, a, he's around... 40 at, at best. Yeah. So, I mean, it's in the Nets' best interest to have to bring Patty off the bench. And then those games that you don't have Kyrie, you got Goran, who is a veteran. He's been he's been in the big games. Yeah. It's perfect. And this team is built is built for the playoffs. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Don't you think though that the depth of the Nets will take a shot if they actually give up assets for a guy that potentially could be a buyout candidate? Keep in mind, Millsap mm -hmm. not playing. They're already actively looking for a team for this guy. Joe Harris, been injured pretty much the whole season. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you're not really giving up anything. And again, it's championship or bust for this team. If they don't win the finals, expect this team to break up. You know, I this is the power of notes, okay? He's ready for <laughs> everything because yeah. he wrote down everything. Everything under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so up next, Ai, what do we got? And you know what? The New York Knicks, they've kind of been a disappointment given that they were promising um, at the start of the season. Yeah, yeah. And then now they've got some, you know, misbehavior issues with their star player, um, <laughs> Julia. Uh. So what do you think should they look for next time? All right, all right. Um, when we're talking about the Knicks, okay, keep in mind, Julius is coming off a great season. Yeah. And the type of player he is, he's ball dominant. Mm -hmm. They have another guy on there, Barrett, very yeah. ball dominant as well. So if I'm the Knicks, I can't move either of those guys. So the best thing is to build around them. How do I build around them? Let's open up the paint, okay? You got two paint clogging bigs there yeah. with Mitchell and Noel. You're gonna have to send one of those guys out, okay? Who do you want to bring in? You want to bring in a 3 and D big. I like Miles Turner. We just saw what the Pacers did with Sabonis. Yeah. They're clearing house, all right? <laughs> so it's, it's rebuild mode for, for, the Pacer, for the Pacers. Um, send Miles Turner over there that you're one step closer to your rebuild. Miles Turner will open up the paint. He'll block shots on the defensive end. He'll hit threes on offense. And then you give the paint, the, the paint, it's wide open for Barrett and Julius Randle to take flight. 
You know, I I I like the logic. I just don't think that the pace will get will move a Turner now, considering that I, it felt their last move felt like it was a choice between Sabonis and Turner. Yeah. So you know, keeping Turner, I feel at least because you won't have a guy with that type of potential coming in via trade in the same position. So. I don't know, but again, you have all the notes. Yeah. I think you have, you have an answer for okay, that. Okay, okay. Historically, <laughs> Miles Turner has been looking for a bigger role yeah. on a team. All right, um, he's been there longer than Sabonis. Sabonis comes in, Miles Turner takes a back seat. True. This is an opportunity for Miles Turner to show a different part of his game, being around, being around Randall, being around Barrett, and and again. It's a win-win. You um, to make the money work. Go ahead and send Kemba Walker over there to, <laughs> to, to to the Pacers. I mean, just yeah. I mean, buy buy him out, rebuild, start it over. Well, uh, you know, let's yeah. see, let's see. But uh, you know, I'm really interested to see what the Pacers are doing next because I don't yeah, think I they're do. done. I am they're too. not. They're I not done too. yet. But you know, and for the Knicks. I feel for their fans, but <laughs> let's go I, the next one. And you one. know what, last but not the least, it's the biggest talk of the town, especially when it comes to trading, and it's the Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers. And you know, we all know for sure that an all-star team wouldn't really go through whatever goal they wanted to have, mm. especially that now they're looking for players that will fit the dynamics of their team. And it's not really about the all-star, it's not all about um, their their former teams like yeah. before, so what can you say about this? All right, all right. I've been on the record on, uh, about this, all right? Yeah. I, I, you know, the only change that I want to see on this Lakers team, mm -hmm. all right, is to send out Russell Westbrook, I mean, <laughs> West, Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah, all sorry, right. sorry, all sorry. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Okay, yeah. how do we go about <laughs> doing this, all right? Now, again, this is my wish list, all right? Yeah. I, I'm talking about spacing the floor, all right? Yeah. What was the formula for the Lakers when they won in the bubble, mm -hmm. okay? It was space. They had a bunch of shooters out there who played the point guard. It was LeBron. LeBron's a point guard. Let's just face the facts, all right? Yeah. He's a point guard. Now, how do we make it work, all right? You deal with the Rockets, and it's not for who you think, all right? All the talk is about John Wall. No, give me Eric Gordon, all right? Give me Eric Gordon to make it work. I mean, my wish list, mm -hmm. throw in Christian Wood. All right. Really? Okay. All yeah. right. He's a, he's a, again. He's another one of those space the floor bigs. Yeah, yeah. And he can play with AD. He can play the four. He can play the five. You want AD on the court as much as possible, but you don't want to mess the spacing up when he doesn't want to play the five. Yeah. By throwing in DeAndre Jordan or Dwight Howard. All right. So you get him at the four. You get Christian Wood in there. You have shot blocking, rim protection, and you have outside shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned moving the uh, Russell Westbrook and I and again for people that I feel if you're a Lakers fan you're, you're not quite sure <laughs> whether or not you're getting enough bang for your buck if you do move uh, Russell Westbrook but then a lot of people are also saying that you know you look at this team is anyone is everyone untouched is, sorry is LeBron the only untouchable guy that you got there is can you put AD in the chopping block and get something good in return or do, do you feel that this is it for the Lakers I'm, if I'm the Lakers, I'm not touching LeBron. I'm not touching AD. These are generational talents. Yeah. You need these talents. I mean, a, a, a Durant-type player, a Giannis-type player. You need these talents to be successful in the NBA. Again, imagine a, st imagine a starting five of Malik Monk, Eric Gordon, LeBron r running the point, Christian Woods, and, and Anthony Davis. I'm, to me, again, all right, we don't have the perimeter defense. Yeah. That's, that's been a problem for the Lakers. But, I mean, any any... Defender over Russell Westbrook is better, in in my opinion, obviously. I I, I get you, and I like how you said we. Uh, you're, you're taking ownership of the Lakers. You know, the fans the fans do that. Uh, I I do that to my Jazz, so I understand. Coach, it's a pleasure having you here in the studio. Oh, hey, I miss it here. I miss it's it here. Your, your first time working with us here, and uh, we love your notes. Uh, yeah, the, hey. if, if you can zoom in on it, yeah, they're yeah. actually on yeah. a notepad <laughs> that is scanned and then printed Amazing. out. So again, Coach, thank yeah. you very much, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Definitely, anytime, anytime. Thanks for having me. All right, so after the break, we go inside the game with the head coaches of our national beach volleyball teams as they prepare for the upcoming Southeast Asian Games. Stay tuned, you're watching the game.
you're watching the game. The 31st Southeast Asian Games are set to kick off this May and our country's national beach volleyball teams are ramping up preparations. Our very own Billy Capistrano caught up with head coaches Paul Jandoro Iras and Robel Verayo as they look ahead to representing the country in this latest edition of Inside the Game. Coach Dolo and Coach Bill, welcome to the game. Hello po. Before anything else, syempre kakamusahin ko muna ang mga teams ninyo. So nagsimula na ba yung preparations here for the SEA Games at kamusta ang mga players natin? Coach Bill, mauna ka muna for the men's team. So far, okay naman yung team namin. Uh, we just started the bubble training here in Subic Bay. So okay naman. Uh, yun, start na kami for preparation for South Asian Games. Ay nakaka-excite naman. So nasa Subic kayong lahat. At sabi mo nga kanina kung pwede pakita yung mga players na nag-e-enjoy, <laughs> nag-e-enjoy ngayon, nagsi-swimming. Pero eh, ikaw naman coach, dalo ka mo na yung women's team ngayon. How are you guys preparing for the SEA Games at may mga challenges na ba kayong hinaharap ngayon or ina-anticipate? Now, nandito kami sa Cebu, January 15 pa. Nandito kami sa Ellis Resort sa Michael Costello, kung saan yung hometown ni CC. So Dito kami nag-training for the moment, tapos then dilipat kami sa week on Sunday para ituloy yung continue ng bubble lang. Pero sa training naman, okay naman. Maganda yung buhangin. Mababait yung mga tao, tsaka todo support sila sa national team, kaya mas okay. That's great to hear, Coach. Now, Coach is looking at the lineup, no? talagang malalakas yung pool of players ninyo. So, merong mga nawala, merong mga bago, merong mga nanatili, at meron namang nagbabalik. Now, for the men's team, Coach, Bill, how did you come up with this selection? Uh, since the start of the selection ng tryout, which is last year, April, so, uh, we made uh, 10 players, uh, 5 teams, sa pool. So, we have a tournament last June and last November. So, doon namin na-determine kung which is team ang pwede namin ipadala sa SEA Games. Kung pwede sa, sa loob ng limang team, kung sino yung top two teams at saka mga partners nila ang, ang, ang pwede mag-compete. Kasi we have, we, have ano eh, we have five teams. So, we only need two teams to participate in South East. As of now, on the process pa rin. Kung sino yung, kung sino yung top two teams na maipapatala na natin. Pero most of them talagang competitive. You want to get the two, two slots uh, na, ano, na ticket for South Asian Games. So, pukuha na rin na yung sign namin. So, yun. Pero okay nga yun, Coach, kasi diba, pag may healthy competition, mas napupush yung mga players to excel and to do their best. Yes, kasi as a coach naman, kasi as a coach, kailangan ma-determine mo kung ano, kung saan sila yung malakas at saan sila mahina. So, lahat naman ng ng players na yun, you have to help din paano na ma-improve yung, yung skills ng kung paano sila maglalaro. So, ginagawa namin yun, nasabi namin, tinuturo namin. Ngayon, kung mag-excel talaga sila doon at ma-improve nila sarili nila, lahat sila, so we just have to choose only four players eh. So, kailangan pagalingan na lang talaga sila. Now, para sa iyo naman, Coach Dolo, when we look at your pool of players, meron ka mga veterano also at mga next-gen na beach volleyball stars. How did you come up with this list of yours? At ano yung mga naging criteria mo for choosing them? Yung core ng team namin, of course, yung naglaro ng SEA Games 2019. Then, nagdagdag kami ng grassroots, which is under 23, under under 21 and meron din kaming under 18. Then so yung kulang namin, kulang kami ng mga veterano pa. Binigyan kami ng exposure ng BNBF no last 2020 and 2021. So nakita namin kung ano yung kulang natin. So kaya yung kaya nagdagdag kami ng kailangan na may experience sa team. Kaya Nadagdagan yung team namin na merong veterano ngayon ng taon na to. So maganda, maganda yung ano ng pool namin na lineup ngayon. 
players. It's a very interesting mix of players that you have in your pool now. Pero Coach Dolo, if sa men's merong Ranan Abdilia na nagbalik, sa women's naman syempre, let's focus our attention on the Bionic Ilonga, si Jovelyn Gonzaga, who said last year that she will be taking on a new route. At ito na nga, nandito na nga siya focusing on the National Beach Volleyball Program. So how does it feel to have this veteran in your pool of players? And like Ranran, Ran, what can she bring to the team? Actually, sobrang laki eh. Kasi unang-una, ano yan eh, baga sobrang kilala sa Beach Valley. Bago siya nakilala sa yung bet, talagang Beach Valley na siya. 2016, na nag-represent kami, talagang kinakausap ko na yan. Siya na kung pwedeng maglaro sa national team ulit. But syempre, may mga, ano siya, may mga commitments din. So, hindi pa pwede. So, ngayon, talagang nag-decide siya na yung commitment niya sa beach. Kaya kami nagkatagpo ulit. So, 2022 na. So, ilang taon na yun. <laughs> so, apaka-aba apaka ng taon na hinihintay namin siyang bumalik dito. Which is ngayon, nabigyan ng pagkakataon. Kaya malaking bagay. Tsaka, lalo na sa mga bata na may isang Jobelin Gonzaga na nasa team natin. So, depende na lang kung sino sa kanila talaga yung mag-represent. Kasi yung mga bata, gumaling na rin eh. Now, coaches, here's a big question. So, sa SEA Games 2019, nag-bronze ang men's and women's beach volleyball teams. And I'm sure na yung goal uh, this year is to surpass that. Siyempre. Now, on your end, ano yung kailangan gawin ng team para makuha yung gold sa Vietnam? May iibahin ba kayo this time around? Coach Dolo, maguna ka na po. Um, of course, siyempre. Kasi kung ano yung kulang noong 2019, kailangan, kailangan namin pukunan na ngayong taon na ito. Kagaya nung height, kailangan namin magpataas ng height. Yung rich sa block, kailangan namin sumabay sa block. Kasi yun yung nagkukulang sa ating ano eh, Pilipino ba? Yung medyo mali tayo, pero talagang lalaban tayo. Pero kung mapataas natin yung, yung height natin, yung block rich natin, mapataas yung level ng ano, mas tataas yung level ng laro. Kaya yun yung dinidevelop namin ngayon. For you, Coach Bill, ano naman yung kailangan yung baguhin or or yung mga challenges na siguro haharapin nyo coming into Vietnam? Tama si Coach Dolo. Yung, kung, kung ano yung observa- observation namin noong 2019 na kailangan pa ng team, uh, yun ang pinupunuan namin. Hindi sa, sa akin is yung, yung combination ng bawat ba- players. Kung sino ba talaga yung partner na dapat mong isama dun sa isa para mag-gelling ng maayos. Now lastly, meron ba kayong mensahe para sa mga beach volleyball fans na walang sawa ang pagsuporta sa mga team ninyo? Coach Bill? Sa mga fans na sumusuporta, sana <laughs> patuloy nyo suporta ng beach volleyball. Uh, so we're a uh, growing team na. Sabi nga nila, yung 2019 baby pa kami. Pero ngayon medyo maganda na yung ano namin. Hindi ka very good players na. Mga magagaling na. Uh, very competitive na sa international. So, hopefully, suporta pa rin kayo at sumuporta kayo lagi. At maraming maraming salamat sa suporta niyo. Sa lalaro na sa mga volleyball fans niyan. Of course, maraming maraming din salamat sa PNBF, sa Redisco, sa pagtuloy na pag-support para mag-grow tong beach volley. Kasi ito talaga yung pangarap namin. Uh, Magiging ano siya eh, yung dumami yung magdaro ng beach volley. Kaya gusto ko talaga namin mag-pedal eh para yung mga next generation Mainggan mo silang maglaro ng Beach Valley. Kaya yun talaga yung pinaka-goal. Kaya maraming maraming salamat. Sana huwag kayong magsawa at patuloy nyo kaming supportahan sa darating na mga upcoming games at sa mga tournaments pang lalaroan namin. And thank you for your time, Coach Dolo and Coach Vail. And good luck sa preparations nyo for the SEA Games. was Billy Capistano with our Beach Volleyball National Team coaches. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Tinsay. I'm Paul Del Rosario. This has been The Game.